Good evening, everyone. How are you? Hope everyone's had a blessed day. I've heard talk to so many people today. Tina and I have been visiting all day long and and uh, talked to some on the phone. And but we saw Ed and Geraldine and Tootsie and talked to Pat Jenkins and Dexter and Lois. And so we've kind of made our rounds around today. And uh, everybody's doing real good. This everybody was saying the same thing. Can you believe how cold it is this quick? And now it's going to be back 70 by Sunday. But, you know, <clears throat> the way I see it is it's just the good Lord above tapping us on the shoulder saying, get ready, it's coming. <laughs> and give us a day, right? And uh, thank God for that. Um, it's been a good day. It's been a good day in the Lord. I'm going to look at two or three different scripture tonight. Um, we're going to look at 2 Timothy 1.7, 1 John 4.18, and Romans 8.11. And we're going to talk about healthy and unhealthy fear. 2 Timothy 1.7. 1 John 4.18 and Romans 8.11. So 2 Timothy 1.7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of sound mind. Now, if you look at 1 John 4.18, it says, There is no fear in love, but perfect love casts out fear. Because fear involves torment, but he who fears has not been made perfect in love. We love him because he first loved us. And then if you look back to Romans 8, 11, And listen to the words of this. I think we miss it. And I'll get into it later on at the end. More depth into it at the end of our study. But Romans 8, 11 says, But if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Father, I thank you for your word tonight, God, and, and thank you for the promise of your spirit being, uh, God, giving us power and giving us love and giving us self-discipline for anything that we're faced with. That God, we're not to fear, but we're to hand everything over to you through your power. And it's the same spirit, you say, that raised your son Jesus from the dead. And I hope we remember that. In Christ's name, amen. So when I started thinking about fear of healthy and unhealthy fear... Uh, there is healthy and unhealthy, and sometimes we need to know the difference in it and kind of what, how to respond to it and, and think about uh, the differences and recognize the difference in, in, in fear in our life. And, and he tells us not to fear, that we are to, to have the spirit of power, the spirit of love, and the spirit of self-discipline in our life. And what does that mean by self-discipline? That means that we're able to manage our thoughts, manage our emotions, uh, manage our behavior when we're tempted with something in life. Or we face some kind of obstacle in our life that we have enough self-discipline to we, we can discipline ourselves through that and not fear of what might take place. 
I mean, has anyone here ever been scared? Has anyone here ever been paralyzed with fear till you were basically unable to even move? Has that ever happened to anybody? Yeah. You sit in your car in your driveway at 5 o'clock in the morning and people try to come in in your truck and rob you and you'll feel that kind of fear. <laughs> you know, that happened to me, of course, in our driveway, you know, and, and came in on top of me and then my fear was relieved quickly because I just had put my pistol in my seat. So I realized I had a backup plan, and they didn't realize it. But there's sometimes that fear will do that, will it not? And, um, you know, I have fear. I don't know about you, but I have fear of heights. Now, it's not heights like being in a plane. I flew all over the world, but it's heights like I'm not going to get on one of those Ferris wheel things at a fair. You know, that's not going to happen with me. Exactly, I am. You're right. And if I need to flap my wings, I will. You know, um, that's probably my biggest fear, you know, is getting on a ladder and going up on the gutter to clean the gutter out or something. I have a fear of that. Uh, Tina has a fear of spiders, you know. And, and and a fear of heights. We've been trying to help her out, right? We've been, we haven't made it to the, I don't even know what you call that place. What, what's this up here behind Walmart where you go up top of that mountain? Yeah, yeah. Okay. We haven't made it to the top yet, but we're working on it, right? We're getting so far up and we're turning around the road and coming back down. <laughs> and we're going to make it to the top one day. We just had, we hadn't even got up. That's our, our fear of heights is that bad. It took forever when we started coming to church to make it past the jumping off place on 16 Mountain. <laughs> I mean, it took a while. You, I would say, all right, we're getting ready to come up on it. Close your eyes and turn your head so we could make it through those two curves. You know? But people has that kind of fear. I still haven't made it to talk about it. No. Y'all don't. Y'all know where the viaduct's at? You've, well, we get to the edge and go through the first curve, and I have to throw the hazards on to do a U-turn in the road and come back off of it every time. Have not made it across it yet. <laughs> you know? So. It's like you're out <laughs> yeah, when you got that first curve, it looks like you're, you know, so we haven't made it past that yet. Um, now, you know, I was very lucky that I didn't get paralyzed one day because um, we decided we were going to ride our motorcycle to Gatlinburg. And I decided we were going to go through the National Forest so we could see all the overlooks. That was a very bad mistake of mine. <laughs> but, but fear, some people have that kind of fear. And also, people have the fear of change in their life you know if a fear of move or change that you're being called to do something that god's calling you to do something that someone's asked you to take over something or or do something in the church sometimes we have that fear do we not because we first think to ourselves, god i can't do this you know am i equipped for this and am, am I able to serve like that? If you wouldn't, he wouldn't have called you. He, did, he don't expect you to be equipped to do everything and to know everything. It, it's that process where he knows how faithful you are to him. And he's going to use you. And he's going to equip you. So, in fact, the command, fear not, appears. Think about this. From Genesis to Revelation, fear not appears 365 times. How many days are in the year? How many times does he tell us to fear not every day? 
Every day he tells us to fear not. Uh, it, it's, it's abundantly clear that God doesn't want his people to fear or, or face adversity or, or face any kind of, of decision. Don't try to face it alone, but make sure we go to him. And, and I guess putting it another way, we've been given a different fear not as a Christian. And every single day he tells us that and his word tells us that. Don't fear anything today. Whatever you may face, give it to him and put it before him. And he's going to take, I don't think he would have allowed it to be said 365 times throughout the Bible for us not to take that in and realize we can turn to him every day with whatever we're faced with. Which is kind of that daily prescription that he gives us because he's the creator of all. So why do we so often respond in fear? That's just natural to us, isn't it? Not is human nature. We're going to respond that way. So what can we do about the fear that we do face? Is there a better way? Um, if he asks us to do something, and, and, he, and he's going to, you, you serve him long enough, and you be faithful to him long enough, and there's going to be times he asks you to do something, whether it's just a mission trip or whatever it may be, God's going to ask you. And Paul's advice to Timothy here, in his second letter, this was the second letter he wrote to this young pastor. And Paul's encouragement was this. You know, they, Timothy was going through a hard time. And he, God said, he said, for God did not give us a spirit of fear. Is what Paul told him. He said, but he gave you a spirit of power, a spirit of love, and a spirit of self-discipline in your life. If fear doesn't come from God, then where does it come from? Have you thought about that? I thought that the beginning of wisdom starts with fear. That's what a couple of different scriptures in the Bible says. So what does that mean? What's the difference? Uh, one important difference, I guess, for us to recognize, and I thought, you know, there's a healthy fear and an unhealthy fear. Um, understanding the difference helps us through life. And it will definitely help us interpret God's encouragement when he tells us to fear not. Why does he tell us to fear not? Remember what Romans 8:11 said? The same spirit that rose his son from the dead lives in you. He's with us. So a healthy fear, if you start thinking about that, literally saves our life. If you're kind of hiking through the woods and you come up on a bear, is that a good time to start quoting what little bit of verses you know and just walk right on by? <laughs> or is it a time for you to back away slowly and run like a cheetah through the woods? <laughs> right? <laughs> so... You know, think about it. it's un unhealthy fear. Whether you call it fear or maybe just common sense when something like that happens, there is a healthy fear in life that, again, can be beneficial for us when we recognize situations. You know, there's some fears that I have started. I've never really thought about these over until I don't know what's changed me. But used to, if we went to the beach, um, I was the one that you really couldn't hardly see out in the ocean. If I had a ball cap on, you could. I would go out so far, they'd call me in how many times? You know, I would, I'd be, go as far as I could go out there and just float around. I don't even get into water anymore. There's too many of these, these news things showing these shark bitings. And then one of my buddies has been at the beach for the last week fishing, and every day he's catching, he's just standing on the beach where we go catching these six-foot sharks. I'm done. You know? Um, 
And there they were showing that one place we go where there was alligator, an alligator walking on the beach. I mean, could you imagine being out there floating around and an alligator out there with you? I'm done. I, the only other thing, I mean, I fear God every day and I, and I fear the IRS in April. That's about what, that's my fears that's come over me, you know, because every year they keep wanting more and more. So it's also important to note that as followers of Christ, a healthy fear of the Lord is not only beneficial to us, but it's biblical. He tells us in his word to fear, not to fear, but to, to bring more to him. And, and Proverbs 1, 7, it says, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. And the Hebrew word for that also means reverence to the Lord, being reverence to him. And it's so important for us um, as we consider a healthy life to look toward the Lord. It's, it's good and it's right for us to hold him at a higher level and all in our life and be reverence to him every day. And as our creator of the whole world, you know, that's, we should do that uh, every day as the sustainer of this world. And he is the rightful owner of the place that we live in, that he's given us. In Psalm 5, 7, David says, in reverence I will bow. And Proverbs 9, 10, Solomon adds that the same thing. He said, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. David had a healthy fear of the Lord throughout his life. And Solomon knew the fear of the Lord was the beginning of his wisdom and knowledge in life. For hear the fear of God and walk in the ways of the Lord every day. We have that. By bringing everything that we are faced with every day to God. It gives us wisdom. And it draws us closer to him. That knowledge that we need. And godly fear and reverence are, um, it's about knowledge. And the proper place of, of God as a divine creator in our life. And the world as we, and, and and as we think about unhealthy fear, um, the proper place is, is in the hands of God. That we place everything in his hands, who's given us strength, strength through his son. And we think of that strength, and we think of that grip, and that righteousness that he has on our life. And it's the common knowledge in our life to go about our daily walk every day, fearing the Lord, but any other fear we have, not let it be unhealthy to us that it's weighting us down and giving us troubles upon our life, but turn it over to him and give it to him. Unhealthy fear, is the, it can paralyze us sometimes. You can, uh, you know God's heart. You're praying like David that you want to draw closer to him as Paul explained and Second Timothy 1 7 when he was writing this God did not give us a spirit of fear but a spirit of power and of love um, and self-discipline God wants us to grow in that relationship with him not only with him but with our church he's telling us here not to be a statue in the church but to work in the church and to grow your relationship in the church and and grow it through him and in our relationship as believers and with believers to grow our relationship together. Remember back in Acts when it talks about them being in one accord, that this because they had grown that relationship together. That whole group of believers were so close. And they'd done that through their walk with Christ in the New Testament. And this first letter uh, to the church of Thessalonians, Paul said, it's God um, who should be sanctified. In 1 Thessalonians 4, 3, and in the letter to the church of Jerusalem, James said, consider it pure joy. My brothers, when you face trials of many kinds, 
because you know that the testing of your faith develops perseverance. Perseverance must finish its work so that you may be mature and complete, not lacking anything in God. He wants us to continue our walk with him no matter what we're faced with. Don't stop your walk with Christ. God wants us to, to preserve, to finish that race for him. To be that mature and complete Christian to him. Not lacking anything in our life and our walk with him. And this process right here can be, it, sometimes it can be costly to the Christian, can it not? Um, there are many potential problems and obstacles that could incite fear on our life today. Um, the early church members faced all kinds of ridicule, did they not? And persecutions, um, which would occasionally lead to death. Now, I don't think it's going to lead to death right now as us Christians and, and for us teaching and preaching in the United States. Um, I can't say that we face death in our country by doing this. Um, there's a young lady you've heard me speak of that came through our youth group. I got an email from this week, and she's in East Asia, and she has to use symbols and signs in her email to me so they can they read everything she sends out the government does and she you know she's not allowed to say anything about god or jesus so she uses different words so i know what she's talking about and she emailed me this week but um sometimes as christians in the united states though we face uh, ridicule do we not we face bullying uh, because of us taking a stand for Christ. Um, because of our faith in Christ. And don't forget that your faithfulness to Christ makes you an enemy to the prince of darkness of this world. The Bible calls him that. And who is that? It's Satan, right? And there, there are what does it talk about? It says there are powers of, and principalities and spiritual wickedness and high places that are fighting against us because we take the stand for Christ, that we're Christians. And it's in the face of both earthly and eternal enemies that the Lord reminds us right here throughout the entire Bible to fear not. Why does he keep telling us that? Why does he keep saying it? It's because he's in control. And we can't forget that. No matter what we're faced with, he's still in control. In fact, Jesus says, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad in Matthew 5.11. Fear can sometimes rob you of joy, can it not? Your joy with Christ and kind of paralyze us from moving forward. And all that God has called us to do. Sometimes we want to stop and we don't want to move forward. And instead of the spirit of fear, you've been given also the spirit of power and the spirit of love. There was three different ones he gave us there. And I want, to, I want to talk about those three right there just for a minute. The first one was the spirit of power. Now what I'm about to tell you right now... Um, could be one of the most exciting and important, important news that any believer can ever receive. The same word that Paul uses to encourage Timothy is also the same word that Jesus gave the disciples in Acts 1.8. And he said, and you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes on you and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. The kind of power leaves no room for fear or no room for doubt in our life. The power of God. And when a believer has the Holy Spirit 
working in and through him, there is nothing that cannot be accomplished in the accordance to the will of God that's on your life. Everything God puts upon your life, you can accomplish because his spirit lives with us. Romans 11, what did it say? And if the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead is living you, he who raised Christ from the dead will also give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who lives in you. Think about that. When I started thinking about this, that this morning, and I, was, I, I stayed up last night probably to 1 o'clock studying and taking notes and reading this. And, but when I started thinking about it this morning, you know the first thing come to my mind? This is the same spirit that was in the garden with Adam and Eve. This was the same spirit that touched Abraham when he took Isaac to the altar to give him as a sacrifice. And God came and spoke down to him through an angel and said, don't sacrifice your son. I'm getting ready to send my own for you. This is the same spirit that told Moses to go part the Red Sea. It's the same spirit that told Noah to build a boat and they all made fun of him. It's the same spirit that told, took Joshua and he led, them through, led the children out of, out of Egypt, the bondage, and they kept worshiping God because Joshua did. It's the same spirit that was born in a manger and his name was Jesus Christ. It's the same spirit that raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. It's the same spirit that healed the blind man. It's the same spirit that, that healed the man with the leprosy. It's the same spirit that had them to stand and walk because he was crippled. It's the same spirit that hung upon the cross and his name was Jesus Christ and he loved you so much. But It's the same spirit three days later that, that threw the stone out of the way and Christ come walking out. It's the same spirit before long we're going to watch the eastern sky bust open and you're going to see the spirit of God come right in on the great white throne and the great white horse is the same spirit that saved you and kept you from hell. Is it not? It's the same spirit. And in Romans he said he lives in you. I live in you, God said. And if you're experiencing unhealthy fear that's kind of hindering you from experiencing the life that God wants us to live then you need to check yourself and remember that you were given a spirit of power through God. You have nothing to fear. And then he said he gave us the spirit of love. And the book of 1 John uses the same word that Paul uses when he tells Timothy that he has the spirit of love. And this could be an entire sermon. I could just preach on the spirit of of love and God has love for us there's no fear in love but perfect love drives out any fear if you're walking close with God and and you have that faith and you feel his love upon your life there should be no fear if God's calling you to do something don't have fear he's going to be with you oh when we walk in the spirit of love as Christ did Unhealthy fear is driven away. There's no more. Jesus walked to the cross with the spirit of love, did he not? Because he loved us. And we can assume that he walked out of the grave with the exact same spirit of love. He'd done it because he, he loved us. So don't forget that this is the same spirit that's alive in you. Same one. And the next time we're experiencing fear or any other association with fear like anxiety or worry or doubt, then let's check ourselves to make sure we're walking in the spirit of love. We have doubt sometimes, do we not? Let me share something with you. So... Don't think that I haven't prayed day and night and day and night about this food pantry and not had doubts myself. You know? It's just a vision that God gave me. And it's fallen in place. You, you was, I'm not doing anything. You just wouldn't believe how God's working things out. I mean, it's like 
before you can even do one, you have to serve food for six months out of your church to prove that you can do it. That's a whole process. Well, guess what they done? We've been serving food boxes out of our church for eight months, so they bypassed that whole process. We had to pay $35 for a fee to even get an application to fill out. Guess who overlooked the $35 process today? Told us to quit worrying about it, just get the application to them. Guess who bypassed all the application processes today and said we're ready to get y'all started? Just get us the paperwork so we can file it. I don't know what else to say. I'm just trying to stay out of his way. I don't want to mess anything up. You know, the only thing I done was say, God open the door and use us somehow in our community. And don't let us fail. God lead us. Show us the spirit of love to share to others. And he did. So Paul wraps up his encouragement here in 2 Timothy 1.7 by reminding him that he's given a, a spirit of self-discipline along with the other two. And the disciples um, is a, I guess, an ingredient in the process of sanctification. They were sanctified by walking with Christ. And we need discipline in our life to be the same way. Um, to actually, we need to be diagnosed that the fear we are experiencing, that our discipline will be so much with walking with Christ, we'll know how to deal with it. You know? Isn't it just like God, though, to give us exactly what we need? We serve a mighty God. I mean, He knew that all three ingredients would be necessary on this side of heaven, that we would need these in our life. And for all of us who struggle with self-discipline, don't forget that this is an area where you've been given the power from God. No matter what we're faced with, you will conquer it. He will not let you fail. We will conquer this. And it speaks to just how destructive sometimes unhealthy fear can be in our lives. That he said, I'm going to give you the spirit of power. And of love. And of, and of, and of self-discipline to help you overcome all of it. To overcome it all. And we desperately need discipline in our lives do we not to walk with the door lord every day and thankfully through christ we've been given those three spirits and he says and it just kind of man when i think about it i just want to shout thinking it's the same spirit that he gave all these other people for over 5,000 years. He's given all these people throughout the Bible the same spirit that he gives us. I don't know, I don't know who was there at some of the revivals, but I know one night I mentioned, and I never thought about this until that day, and I was praying to God, and I said, God, I need strength tonight. It's, it's the going on the third or fourth night, and I've already preached five or six sermons, and I need strength. And I said, God, you know, God, I want to feel the same strength you gave Peter when he stepped out and went and preached that sermon where, where 5,000 were, 3,000 were saved. You know, could you imagine when he stood up there? He probably don't even know what he said. Because he was so filled full of the Spirit of God. Was he not? You know what I want to do, Warren? Well, I want to walk in here on Sunday mornings. And when we walk out, we say, what happened today? <laughs> the Spirit of God takes over. Amen.
And we testify and we sing and we praise God. So learning to diagnose fear is an important step in dealing with and, and learning to deal with and help us move in our life that God has given us to live. Because fear is sometimes feeling anxiety, sometimes unwelcoming, uh, something unpleasant or something emotional in our life. You know? And, and I know sometimes uh, when Miss Linda has to have a conference call with me and, and we've got the calendar completely full, we feel a little anxiety. <laughs> <laughs> but we know God's going to help us, is he not? Amen. He sees us through it all. Does anybody have a word? Okay. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, it was just he told me Sunday. But now, uh, Paul James 4, 19 says, yeah, let you have your thoughts and every anxiety and stuff like that. Still learning, I'm still learning it. I don't. Uh, well, I've been praying. I've praying, I've been praying every night for all these people. I don't have these pains. I don't mm. have these pains during the night when I wake up. I'll tell them. I'll, I'll tell them. Devin had been texting me about he had been having fear and anxiety and um i've been trying to when he texts me help him letting him know that he can stay close to god and pray to him and god will take it away from him you know and the best way that i do that is um it's the last thing i do before i close my eyes is talk to god and it's the first thing i do when i wake up and, and it helps keep it on my mind there's it's just like me preaching on Sundays. My best time to study a lot of times is 10, 11, 12, 1 o'clock. And when I go to sleep, most of the time I lay there and dream about me preaching all night. <laughs> you know, and so I told him, I said, to get through that, draw to his word, keep him on your mind. That's why the Bible tells us to pray without ceasing, to continually talk to Christ and that anxiety and that fear will be removed, will it not? It'll be removed. Yep, you something we all have to work on every day, buddy. Every day we have to work on it. We all do. Yeah, we're praying for you. You can sit right there with Tina. That way you can go walk our way back. We're getting ready to do prayer request, okay? Thank you for sharing that. Any prayer request? Uh, and Jones. And Jones. Paul Hildebrandt. Mm. Remember Paul. Karen Ham.
What was the last name? Ruth Sager. Okay. Amen. She's back there with a mask on. I saw her come in. Yeah. <laughs> Let's remember her. She goes back to the clinic tomorrow. Um, you know they went to do the surgery. And when they got in, cut her open and got in, there was another tumor they hadn't saw. And it was attached to arteries and stuff, so they couldn't do it. And I think they're starting her back over on radiation. They did take her gallbladder out while she was there, but yeah. yeah, he does. I remember Millie, that family member. Okay. Yeah. Pray for travel and mercies for both of them. Okay. Rwanda. Okay, before we come, I, I want to show y'all something because we're going to need just a little help with this. We got, our, um, we got our business meeting coming up right here and the end of the year is getting ready to happen in two months, you know. So I got this list uh, from Miss Linda and except for about two marks, I, I want to show you something. Can you see all the highlighted parts? <laughs> okay. You can't see them on that either? Well, I can count on... There's about 50 names, I would say, on here. That's people that's on committees and they don't even go to church here. So this is something we got to we gotta get ready to work on. Who's ever over a committee? And I'm telling you this because I've, I've been embarrassed twice now. Um, two different people, new families that's come to church here has asked me what committees we've had and who's over them. And I've never, re I've never met with the committee in a year and a half. So... And I know what I keep hearing, and I don't want to hear any more is COVID. It's done. We just got to get things back together, you know. And um, instead of, and I know a lot of times we kind of, when you get out of that routine of having them and doing that, it's, and, and you got three or four people doing a lot, it's easier just to let them do it and us not get together and decide what the church needs and, you know, people on the committee. So yeah, there's some names on here I've never I don't even know who they are. So it's just something I'd like for us. To, if you're over, I don't know who's over committees. I don't know who's on them. If, but if you are, let's just start thinking about that, and and cause the first of the year is coming up, and we're gonna need to to move on it pretty quick. That's what I've got right here. Yeah, yeah. So. It's just, I, I just want us to start thinking about it, you know. And uh, 
and maybe we can even come up with something and you know talk about a little bit in a business meeting and and see what we need to do about getting it going and anybody got anything if not anyone that can let's come to the altar and pray